We're having an overdose crisis right here and now in our own community. I would do my bit in the morning, get up and just power through my day. I was like a soccer mom. I was a drug and alcohol counselor and I was the first aid person in my community. I've had people die in my arms. The majority of people who are dying from overdose are dying in their homes, they're dying alone. The picture you have of someone overdosing is someone on a, sleep, on a street with a needle in their arm hunched over. That's, that's the picture that jumps to your mind of what an overdose looks like, which we know is, is not the majority of the cases. And I really didn't actually see the, the issue with it, except in maybe the shame surrounding if somebody found out. These are our family members, our loved ones, and so that's why this conversation is so necessary. It's tragic because it's so preventable. Like, no one has to die from this. So some small achievable things that people can do if they're choosing to use drugs are first off and most importantly are to have conversations with your loved ones, whether it's your friends, your family, parents, brothers, sisters, or if that's not safe and you need to use by yourself, uh, there's the Lifeguard app that you can download on your phone and you check in to say that you're going to use and after a certain amount of time you check in to say yes, I'm alive and safe. There's the Narcan kits that are being given out in different community centres and as well available from the pharmacies so that if you are using with friends that they can have that available. We all need to stay open to learning and I'm learning, you're learning and we can do that together. And I think it's a good opportunity to connect with loved ones to save lives. Oh.